I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. We continue now in Nehemiah. We've been reading a lot about the construction of the wall, how each family is given their own section of wall to repair. The enemies of the Jews in the surrounding land form their armies to come try and stop it, but Nehemiah is warned and he sets up a defensive strategy that keeps them at bay so that they can continue the work. Now we pick this up in chapter 5. Many Jews are in bondage to their brethren. and Nehemiah's direction, they are freed, their lands are restored, and taking of usury is discontinued. And there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren the Jews. For there were that said, We, our sons and our daughters, are many. Therefore we take up corn for them, that we may eat and live. Some also there were that said, we have mortgaged our lands, vineyards, and houses, that we might buy corn because of the dearth. There were also that said, We have borrowed money for the king's tribute, and that upon our lands and vineyards. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children. And lo, we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants, and some of our daughters are brought unto bondage already. Neither is it in our power to redeem them, for other men have our lands and vineyards. Well, the complaint here is that in order to get money, there's apparently been a famine, a dearth. This is a drought, famine, however you want to put it. And so in order to get enough food, they had to borrow money and they had to use their land as collateral. They mortgaged their land. To pay the taxes, they had to, take, they had to borrow money. And now many of their children, many of their sons and daughters, are in slavery. They were sold into slavery in order to pay the debt and they don't have the money to redeem them. They don't have the money to get them out of slavery because all their land has been mortgaged. Verse 6. And I was very angry when I heard their cry and these words. Then I consulted with myself, and I rebuked the nobles and the rulers, and said unto them, Ye exact usury, every one of his brother. And I set a great assembly against them. And I said unto them, we, after our ability, have redeemed our brethren the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen. And will ye even sell your brethren, or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace, and found nothing to answer. Also I said, It is not good that ye do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God, because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? I likewise, and my brethren and my servants, might exact of them money and corn. I pray you, let us leave off this usury. Restore, I pray you, to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards, and their houses, also the hundredth part of the money, and of the corn, and the wine, and the oil that ye exact of them. Then said they, We will restore them, and will require nothing of them. So will we do as thou sayest. Then I called the priests, and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. Also I shook my lap and said, So God shake out every man from his house and from his labor that performeth not this promise. Even thus be he shaken out and emptied. And all the congregation said, Amen, and praised the Lord. And the people did according to this promise. So Nehemiah gets the news, gets the uh, report of what's going on here. When they say usury, this is again interest. This is their, you know, they're giving them a mortgage, lending them a hundred town, a hundred shekels, whatever, but requiring them to pay back a hundred and ten. And maybe it's a compound interest, which can cause a cycle of debt that is very hard to get out of. And this is Nehemiah saying, look, it's against the law of Moses to exact usury of another Israelite. You can't, you lend them what you can, and do not charge them usury. Do not charge them an interest. But they're doing that. So you can't do this. And remember that in the Law of Moses, every 50 years, all those who were sold, and all land that was sold into, to another, all land that was given to pay a debt, all people who were sold into slavery, all Israelites, are automatically turned free. No matter how long they've been in service, no matter how long they've been sold, every 50 years, that's the year of Jubilee, everything returns back to its original owner. And that's what Nehemiah is doing here, saying we have to enforce this, this is the law. 
It's been too long. We're not waiting for the next Jubilee. We're just going to do it now because you have been ignoring this law. And the people all agree. He first went to the rulers, the princes. Then he goes to the priests. Then he goes to the general assembly. And he gets them all to make this promise. And I love that he shakes his lap out saying, look, if you don't do this promise, this is what's going to happen to you. As a symbol that they will be shaken out, that they will be driven from their homes if they do not perform this promise. Verse 14. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the twentieth year, even unto the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes the king, that is twelve years, I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. But the former governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people, and had taken of them bread and wine, beside forty shekels of silver. Yea, even their servants bear rule over the people, but so did not I, because of the fear of God. Yea, also I continued in the work of this wall, neither bought we any land, and all my servants were gathered thither unto the work. Moreover, there were at my table an hundred and fifty of the Jews and rulers, beside those that came unto us from among the heathen that are about us. Now that which was prepared for me daily was one ox and six choice sheep, also fowl, were prepared for me, and once in ten days store of all sorts of wine. Yet for all this required not I the bread of the governor, because the bondage was heavy upon this people. Think upon me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. What Nehemiah is saying here is that he did not exact the taxation that was legally allowed to be done. Other governors had been taxing the people. 40 shekels of gold a month plus bread and wine. And he's saying, I didn't do this. He didn't, it, kind of like Donald Trump, he did not take his salary as president. Nehemiah is not taking his salary. All he is doing is, for me and my servants, we need food. And that's it. Give us the food we need to survive and be healthy. And that's all he's taking. We end that here. And we'll pick this up in the next chapter. We're actually going to finish out Nehemiah. It's quite a ways, so... Stay tuned. See you there.